Hi everyone, this is Board Games Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and right now I want to tell you about D-Day Dice, which is a solo or multiplayer game where you are trying to assault a bunker from a beachfront. I really enjoy it. It's a massive system. I do want to tell you about all its components. It plays fabulously solo, and I got to tell you, this game gives me one of the most exhilarating battles at the very end that I've enjoyed every time I've had it, and I've played it for quite a while. I did a promo for this game, um, a preview when it was about to come out, played the older edition, this is the second edition, and now I have the real version here. There's a lot of tentacles to this game, so please bear with me as I try to hit all the different aspects of it and try to share what the joy of the game is. If you haven't heard of D-Day Dice before, essentially what it is is you are playing as a troop and your troop starts at the bottom of these boards. And your mission is to advance up all these different sections and to defeat this bunker to get inside. To do so, you're gonna be rolling these dice over here, and there's six of them. Now these die will give you different things, and they'll give you four currencies plus bonuses. The currencies in the game are gonna be soldiers that you need to survive as you move through, uh, courage that uh, you need to keep building as you're advancing. It also lets you get awards in the game like the Medal of Freedom and different things like this that essentially become uh, really cool bonuses that you can discard to help you survive. Like this says here, all units will gain a combo bonus uh, called a battle cry. And I'll explain a combo bonus in a second here. You're gonna earn tools through these dice. That's what the wrench face is on these. Uh, tools you're gonna sp uh, spend over here to to buy actual items like this one over here. This costs 10 tools and this is called New Orders. May discard a special mission and draw a new one in case your missions are too hard. This can be scenario based. There's things called war stories that goes on top of this that gives you special conditions. Over here, we have stars. Stars is the currency you're gonna spend to buy uh, additional soldiers and specialists. Like this over here is called a crack shot. It costs two to purchase this and it says, if you have at least one active skull in your role, this is a skull. A skull in the game will negate some other dice you have, your final tally, um, you're going to gain two soldiers kind of to offset. Now, soldiers will be persistent until they die, but tools go away and awards go away as soon as they're used. Now, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take all these dice and you're going to roll them once and you have to lock up two. Now, in this case, I'm going to lock up a red and a white with double soldiers on it. I not only get the faces, but if I can get red, white, and blue, I'm gonna get an extra bonus. So I'm gonna roll now, second time. And I don't have it, although it's a pretty good roll, nothing too bad. Let's go for a third and let's do it. Roll for a third and I didn't get it, but I'm gonna get a bunch of soldiers. So I have all these soldiers, I have a courage and a tool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I would add to my uh, player score tracker here. So when you start the game, Every board you're gonna play on, and there's many boards, it's gonna tell you how many um, people you start with. It also might tell you where you're gonna begin. Some of the games are airdrops, and you have to roll and figure out where you're gonna be. Sometimes they'll say, condition A happens here. You have to cross-reference a chart for your scenario to see what condition A is. Maybe it says you're under assault, or maybe you landed safely and you're hidden. In this case, I'm starting with four, so I would take four, and I would add my soldiers. Okay, now once I do that, I can spend whatever currency I have. I can spend my stars to get the soldiers, I can spend my tools to get tools, and then I have to move. I can either stay in a sector that's white three times, or I can advance. To advance, I need to spend courage, that are the badges, but also wherever I land, uh, I have to defeat this bunker. And this says you'll need four people. So you have to reduce your soldiers by four, by six. If it's black, it means you can only stay there once. Here it's 10, plus I need a machine gun fire here. Here I need a cross landmine, so I would either need a land sweeper to come with me somewhere on the board, uh, or I would need uh, to roll a black die to see how many of my soldiers perish. Ooh, crossing, okay. The threshold there, over here, I can roll to get reinforcements. Here I need four courage, 20 men, and I need to do a roll. So I could have a total maybe of like 25 people uh, that would perish on the last one. And that's basically how the thrust of the very, very basic game works. You know, there's other tools in there you can get that are always really cool. Just to show you, this is my favorite one, a 12 point tool, it's amphetamines. You're gonna gain a battle cry, almost like an award, but I really like that one. 
And that's what we're gonna do here. But all these boards here are double-sided and there's a ton of different missions. Sometimes when you advance, you have a choice of where you wanna go. If I go here, I'm gonna get an extra tool. If I go here, I get an extra star. That influences what I'm gonna buy in the future. Who I spend my money on to buy influences what decisions I go for in the future, how I can manipulate dice, which dice I choose to reroll, what I can get away with with my tools. Some are gonna say your Minesweeper has to uh, perish here or you can't even enter if that's the case. You know, um, over here is a guard of 10, plus you gotta roll this. Here, you might have a medic. Medic reduces your casualties, but it goes away here. I mean, there's a ton of different things. It's always very hard to get here. I mean, you're gonna find that you're building up your troops here. Uh, you're staying one, two, three rounds advance. One, two, three rounds here. It's kind of like up in the air. So, and then sometimes you gotta go. When you are playing each one of your armies, now in this case I played as the Americans, are gonna get your own player board and you're gonna have your own bonuses. But depending on what country you are, they're gonna have different bonuses should you get a red, white, and blue. So before, let's say I had my red, my blue, and I had my double white here, okay? I would not only get the soldiers marked there, I'd get my bonus. Now in this case, it says here, I gain five troops. On other people's boards, it would say things like, I get four troops, but everyone else who's playing with me gets four troops. Or it might say, you can switch uh, gear between people. That's gonna be important because as you move the boards, you can see here it says max of one unit in this location. Sometimes you can't travel together. Sometimes you can only switch things if you're in the same unit. Sometimes it lets you buy free gear. I mean, there's a ton of different things based on who you are. Okay, now uh, let me show you some of the expansion stuff here. And there is a ton. So this is the beachfront, but there's also a part of the game that starts before the beachfront, and that is going to be the highway to hell trying to get there where you're trying to go through the ocean. When you do that, you're going to have a special placard that tells you what the bonuses are. And when you're doing that, what happens, instead of getting bonuses, it actually makes it harder. Like if we look at this again, it says right here, if I rolled a combo, which I'm trying to avoid, it says you get a stray bullet, you're gonna lose a passenger. Uh, man overboard, direct hit, shrapnel, panic, the motor stalled, all types of things that can go wrong. Now let's take a look at the box itself to kind of show you what comes in there. Uh, one second, it's big and heavy, part one. Part two, now this is part of a big system. Part three, which is if you want to play as the Germans in this. I haven't actually gotten into that yet. <laughs> and then part four here, airborne in your pocket. This is going to be, this is a crazy expansion here. I'll get to that too. Ugh. But let's put this away and look over here. When you are playing, and I showed you before things get rough, these are the boards you're gonna be trying to traverse on. Now you start at the bottom here where it's yellow. And like I said, sometimes in other scenarios, you might land drop somewhere else. Uh, but you start back here, you know, you have a bunker of four, 11, three, you advance, three, seven, you have landmines you're trying to get through. Remember, you can't go for bonuses. So you can't um, get the big, rush of reinforcements and stuff. So you are really starved moving through this so that when you land here, it's even harder. So it's really about, you know, how <laughs> brutal do you want to make the game on yourself? So that's a double board here. Look at this crazy one here. You're going to start down here. You only, you can choose. Do you want one person to start with three courage or four people and no courage? As you advance, you can move laterally, but you can't repeat on a section. If you go up here, you have to come back down and go around, stuff like this. Double, you have to roll two for machine gun fire. This over here says you can only roll five out of your six die. Sometimes they're gonna say, look at this, my goodness, you're gonna lose a star, 15 plus machine gun fire, and then to come up here, it's gonna be 18, you have to roll the dice twice, plus you need five. Sometimes you have to get from between two different bunkers, which is kind of crazy. Here, every time you stay in a scenario, the first time you're there, you lose six. Next time, eight. Next time, 10. It just keeps getting worse. Okay, I forgot what that symbol means, but there's so many different things. The other thing I should tell you too is every one of these boards has a number. Uh, like this says number six, this says strong point Hillman number 11. There are scenarios in a scenario book and it tells you what all the symbols are gonna mean for those very specific uh, missions you're going on. But this isn't the only type of mission you can have here. Okay, look at that. You can enter for all those different points. <laughs> you can come in, depending which side you come from, there's different, 35 to get there. I mean, you, you really have to be experienced on how to manipulate 
and prepare yourself for adversity. You need to be very versatile in this game to advance. Parachute in up here. Sometimes, too, you're going to have to lay down chits, and those are called war stories. You get criterion, and the uh, chits are going to tell you, okay, there's certain things you need to accomplish to survive this. There's vehicles in the game. Sometimes you can take vehicles, and they can ignore landmines and protect you a little bit until they blow up. Sometimes you have to take over the vehicle. Here you have gunfire. So many cool boards. Don't want to bore you with that, but... I want to show you all the different symbols and all the different ways you can do that. Okay, so those are the boards themselves. When we come over here, we're going to have a whole bunch of dice. And the dice here collectively are, for every person who's going to play the game, all the different factions. Uh, these are ones that are unit dice, and those are colored like the... Uh, units you're going to be. You can not only be different countries in the game and you get all these different counters, you get counters for the different units and sometimes you get legendary units, famous units in the game. These are the chits you're going to lay down in the game and the scenario will tell you whether uh, what their purpose is going to be like. You know, every time someone perishes, you have to put something down. And if this one area has so many chits in it, you've lost the game, something like that. Some scenarios are going to have servicemen, and they're going to say, you need to pick up so many servicemen before the end of the game. Here, uh, this is a first lieutenant, but instead of using stars, you're going to have to spend courage. That not only makes it hard to get courage, it makes it hard to move up the board. There's a ton. Look at the content in there. I mean, there's so much variety here. This this was not an overnight process. These are the boats that move up the uh, waterfronts. Okay, some of the games are going to have you using regular heroes. Some of them are going to have you using legendary specialists. They're harder to get. They're more expensive, but they do cooler things. Like this one here says the resistance. It says you're going to obtain a battle cry, a uh, red, white, and blue combo. Uh, you may choose two battle cry options at the same time. Normally, you can only get one. Um, the legendary items are the same. They're they're more expensive to use, but when you get them, they're more powerful. Here's going to uh, cost 12. You're going to get the battle cry and you can get it from another unit that's on the board sometimes you're going to have special mission cards here and they're going to tell you some type of criterion that's been added to the game like this says here in this scenario you're going to have to pick up three servicemen these are the vehicles you're going to use this one here says if you get this vehicle you can buy it right out for 20 ignore all sector requirements meaning you could roll through those landmines or maybe some type of barricades in there um, these are regular specialists for certain scenarios field promotions that you're going to get uh, depending on who you are, how many people you get, and it says rally any one available specialist for free. These are all dependent on your scenarios, and I'll show you the scenario book in a moment. These are the players for all the different countries that I have bundled that I'm not using at the moment. Now, moving over, I know it's a lot of talk. There's expansions called War Stories in the game. War Stories is a part of the game that adds um, complications to you. Like this says, hell to pay. Multiply the number of players by four to give you a hell number. For every active skull obtained uh, from every unit's final tally, so I'm rolling my die if I get the skulls, place one skull token on the table in a designated space you're going to call hell. If hell ever has a number of tokens equal or superior to the hell number, the game is lost. So you have to be mindful. So now you need to invest in things to get rid of those rerolls that make them inactive. Oh boy, now airborne. I haven't even gotten to this yet. So we talked about the waterfront moving up into here. Well, once we get here and we get to the bunker, then you got to fight inside the bunker. <laughs> now this is a big box over here. This has got to be another like 10 pound box. I swear it's heavy as can be. And inside of here is a whole bunch of chits that I've only used ugh, once, but I try to put the, uh, here you go. You get your special little markers here for keeping all your, um, what do you call it, all your stats. These are going to be the different vehicles and different squadrons and the rooms you're trying to get in. Look at all this. I haven't even gotten into the, uh, the new box when I came here. But what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to get into here and you're going to fight that. Now, I'm not up for that much punishment yet. It's hard enough for me to get through a regular scenario. But when you're trying to do that, what's going to happen is it's going to give you some specifics. This one here is called Pitch Black. 
start in a drop zone, and then you're going to get a rifle, a shotgun, and a trench gun. Play. You're going to take a player that, when they get into something called a the locks, they're the only visible one because they dropped in. You're trying to move through. Sometimes you're the only person trying to take people out. Special um, operatives, sometimes they tell you who you're going to encounter and stuff. And let's see if it has it under events. Yeah, under events, it says here, for an encounter, you're going to roll a die. And if you get uh, the men, you're going to have three infantry. If you get a star, you meet four. Insides, if there's alerts, if there are items you encounter, the tag team events here for special operatives, it tells you that your max health is going to be eight. You're going to start with a flare. This is going to happen. Um, then you're going to have bunker command here. This is what happens once you get into the bunker. <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And then there's a whole deck of cards over here related to that. And like I told you before, there is just no shortage of trying to make the game interesting. These are all war stories I'm showing you here. These are also when you do such a thing. Okay. Okay. These are the um, bonuses you get as special units in the game. So you not only get those legendary specialists or whatever, a 92nd Infantry Division, depending who you the French Foreign Legion, the Royal 22nd Regiment from Canada. It, it goes through all these different units that you can try to act as. Every one of these has a little book that you use too to go through it. So like through War, uh, war Stories, the rule book here, shows you what your components are going to be. It tells you how to roll. Once you know how to play the base game, all this comes pretty darn easily. Um, again, how to pay. What it's going to do is explain essentially that it's in reverse. And then you need the actual scenario books. So you're going to have one for the D-Day dice, kind of the standard. And it shows you what all the symbols are going to mean. And then it tells you, you know, depending on your... Uh, Scenario. So the first one I, I put out for us was the very first one called Tiger, map number one. But you have an exercise tiger and then you have basic training. In basic training, you're going to put out the amphetamines, the bazooka, the flax vest, and the lucky charm that you might be able to get. It also defines what the spaces are going to mean. And it does that for every single sector. It also gives you a little bit of a historical background on it, which is kind of fun. Um, the war stories, it does the same thing. It explains what all the attributes are going to mean here. I mean, it's, it's pretty intuitive once you get to it. And then you have for the way to hell when you're doing the water. It's the exact same thing. And you put that all together and you have this D-Day dice, what I call war system. I got to tell you that I think the dice are the perfect enemy, the first perfect opponent because they're not predictable and you got to deal with it. You know, a lot of times I see dice or random cards uh, kind of knocked as being random. Uh, sometimes they can be, but most often they're actually not. You know, when you roll the dice, you you have to be ready to mitigate what it gives you. And that's the fog of war you're experiencing as you go here. So anyway, uh, without rambling too far, that is D-Day Dice, one of the coolest solo games I have. If you have any questions about it, let me know and I'll try to help you out. Um, I have a bunch of dice over here too. Some, some of these cards, just to, before we wrap up here, we'll say you get an extra die, you get to put it in your total. I only to keep these over here because sometimes uh, you'll have bonuses or people that'll say you get to roll an extra die of a specific color, gold or any color, stuff like that. All right, friends, enjoy that, especially during these crazy quarantine times. I hope you're well. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, let me know. Talk to you soon, friends. Bye.